We welcome you into the President's Suite here at Moret Stadium as we do Bears Talk Live, but it's actually pre-recorded. Eric Bach here with head football coach Mike Jacobs. Couldn't make it to Blowing Rock this week due to a scheduling conflict, so here we are on Wednesday afternoon ahead of a homecoming game between Lenore Ryan and Newberry this weekend. And Coach, let's go back to Saturday for a second. 34 nothing win over Barton. That's a Barton team that scored some points this year, and your defense completely snuffed them out. Gave up 141 yards in the game. That's the eighth lowest since 1993. I mean, it was a defensive game for you guys from start to finish. Yeah, I thought our defense did a tremendous job. Um, I think that, uh, again, we talked going into the game, uh, Jordan Terrell, the running back, or Terrell, the running back, is uh, one of the best in the conference, if not the country. Um, I think he was averaging close or over 150 yards a game. I think we held him to uh, 61 or something like that. So to keep him in check and then to keep their quarterback run game in check was really a big deal for us. And anytime you can come away with the with that donut and then keep that zero on the scoreboard, you know you've played pretty well from start to finish. 21, uh, scoreless first quarter, 21 nothing in the second quarter, really take the momentum. Dewey and Zaire for the second week in a row both go over 100. I mean, you're starting to develop a real two-headed monster in the backfield. Yeah, and really, really there's three people. James yeah. Davis is the third the third prong to that attack. And, you know, for us, I, I think I'm most proud of the development of the offensive line. Um, that's a group that we challenge quite a bit. And, and John Ross May, I mean, he's really the glue at your defense, leads your team defensively in most statistics, tackles, has a couple interceptions. He feels like he's the glue between the front seven and the back end, and he's a guy who's still relatively young that has a lot of experience here playing for you guys. Sure. John Ross is part of that COVID class of 2020. He was uh, you know, one of the first kids we recruited here. We had been recruiting him at our past stop, and um, he, he's a kid who I'm probably most proud of his development as a leader. Um, he, he's, he's been a tremendous player for us almost since he stepped on campus. But um, the leadership he's developed as a captain uh, over the course of the last two and a half years is really special. And he is a guy that, that keeps us on task and holds guys accountable and um, really, really does a tremendous job for us with our defense. Dre Lester goes out in the limestone game with an injury, but obviously we know how deep your wide receiver room is. Keelan Parsons has the first 100-yard receiving game of the season for your team on Saturday. Dom Marshall gets in the end zone for the second week in a row. He's a D1 transfer that I think you guys think highly of, and now with with Dre out for an undisclosed amount of time, that wide receiver room has been asked to step up in some other places, and it feels like people have. Yeah, and, and we seem to talk each week about a different wide receiver. Yeah. Um, Keelan Parsons, along with Ryan Carter, have been as consistent as any two players on our football program yeah. or in our football program. Um, obviously, it's good to see Dom Marshall get into the fray a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, he's a kid with infinite talent. It was a matter of you know, consistently picking up the offense and doing things the way we ask in practice and, and, and doing that at a high enough level that we can trust them on game day and um, forced into some playing time, but been doing a nice job for us. And then, you know, Jordan Payne's another guy yeah. that, that's really uh, been a big part of our offense. And I want to look ahead now. Behind us, there's going to be a really big game here on Saturday. Top 20 matchup, you guys in Newberry probably thought of going into the season as maybe the top two teams in the conference and I think the way it's played out so far it appears to be that way um obviously they got you guys last year down there little revenge factor today or this week I mean it's a home game it's homecoming can you give us a little bit of a preview of what you're expecting between the bricks on Saturday I, I expect a really good game against yeah. two of the top teams in the SAC conference I think that uh coach Knight's done a great job they have quite a bit of their roster coming back yeah. especially offensively from from a conference championship team and then a team that went on the road and beat a a really good West Florida team last year in the right. NCAA playoffs so um they're extremely talented uh they they provide a huge challenge and right now they're the defending champs you know this is a game that um, Newberry's always got a ton of really good football players and they play hard they do a nice job defensively and um, I think it's going to be a heck of a game Saturday you know this is a trophy game as well we play for the Bishops trophy that's right and Dre Harris their quarterback is really good he had some injury problems he's been in and out of the lineup but it feels like with their schedule the past couple weeks they've kind of been saving him to get him healthy for this game probably expect him to play they have a really good running back in mario anderson on offense it's, it starts with stopping those two guys for them 
Yeah, I, I think Mario Anderson, as we this is back to back weeks now where I think we're facing um, one of the elite backs, not just in our conference, yeah. but in the country. He, he's, he's a tremendous really back. I think he had, you know, he had 240 plus yards last week against Catawba. And, uh, you know, he's a bit different than some of the other guys that we've seen. He's a big physical kid. He runs hard. And, and to me, he is the key to their offense. Uh, Dre Harris has been in and out a little bit, but their backup's done a nice job. Yeah. Uh, moved the ball quite effectively against Catawba and then they, they seem to have wide receivers that have been there for a long time that have made a lot of plays for them. So they're they're challenging to, to defend for sure. And on offense, obviously, they're going to be keying in on Dewey and Zaire and Jadis in, in your running game. I think Sean White's going to have to make some plays in the passing game, and, and he certainly has shown the ability to do that the past few weeks. What are you hoping for from Sean on Saturday? I'm hoping Sean continues to grow yeah. uh, and get better each week, be efficient with what we're asking him to do, make really good decisions uh, when he's asked to do it, whether it be checks at the line of scrimmage or, you know, in RPO situations, just and, and protect the football. And, and if he does those things, then, you know, we'll have ourselves in position to potentially win the game. 2 p.m. between the bricks on Saturday. It's homecoming. Obviously, you know, the game speaks for itself, but if you're on the fence about coming out here, it's going to be a really high-level Division II football game here between the Bricks. Coach, looking forward to it. Good luck. Thanks, Eric. Back here on Bears Talk Live slash recorded. We're recording here on Wednesday ahead of a Thursday release of the show. Not in Blowing Rock this week due to a scheduling conflict, but Eric Bach here with head women's soccer coach Dean Ward. Bears have had three straight wins, haven't lost in over a month, currently tied for first place in the South Atlantic Conference with two conference games left to play. And, Coach, great to see you. The The season has been going really well for you guys. Can you kind of just give a general update about where you think the team is and and where you hope to be in, in, in two weeks? Yeah, I mean, it's nice to hear some of those, those stats. I hadn't thought about it too much in terms of how many wins on the trot and such, but um, I think there's been progress throughout the season where – both in results but also how we're playing um, so that's pleasing from my perspective and puts us in a position where we're competing for you know a championship so we have uh, a couple of big games coming up and giving up just one goal in this three game winning streak I mean obviously the offense has, has picked itself up as you've gone through the the middle part of this season but the defense has really locked down these other teams I mean if you know that maybe one goal is going to win you the game. That's got to be a, a pretty reassuring feeling every night when you go out there. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the games have been tight uh, yeah. all across the board. Um, you know, so one or two goals could could uh, get the result. So making sure that we're organized at the back and, and put ourselves in a position where we're in the game is, has been important. But, um, you know, it's, it's not just the goalkeeper and the defenders. Like, we, we defend from the front and... Everyone's doing their bit from a, a team effort defensively, and same on the other side of the ball in the attacking sense as well. So, Alan Hansen, your freshman, scores a game-winning goal against Coker in your last outing, scores a goal, has an assist in that hard-fought Carson Newman game. I mean, that was a really, really good game here a couple weeks ago. But Alan wins National Player of the Week. She's got eight goals in the year. I mean, she has been just such a force in that final third for you guys on offense. Yeah, Ella's been consistent throughout, and I think, you know, obviously – the last weekend she got a lot of uh, plaudits and recognition which was deserved but mm -hmm. I think over the course of the season you've seen that she's been a, a real handful for teams to defend against and has some versatility in how she scores goals you know she's a threat in the air she's a threat running in behind she's she's good hold up play and combination play so she can score goals in different ways and she has um, but it also other players are opening up spaces for her as well so I think while she's scored a number of really important goals, there's other players contributing as well to create those opportunities and also finish those opportunities as well. Kate Casey gets the game winner against Carson Newman. Can you kind of go back to that game? And, and I mean, it was, as you said, such a hard fought match, two fairly evenly matched teams. It, it felt like, I mean, you guys were able to squeeze out the result at the end. Can you walk me through that second half in the last like 15 to 20 minutes as you were trying to, to get the game winner? Yeah, I, th I think first half we controlled the game for sure, um, and had a lot more of the possession and, and some good chances. Mm -hmm. And I think we could have been been up a bit more in the first half. Um, and credit to Carson Newman, they came out and, and tweaked some things in some of their positioning, which which affected the game. And, and it took us a little while to kind of readjust and, and get back into the game. But the final fifteen minutes, I thought again we had a couple of more dangerous opportunities and. 
you know, I, th I think we have some threats in terms of balls in the box and crossing opportunities, and Kate's one of those. Yeah. Um, you know, and and she competed in that area and was able to to reel it into the back of the goal. So, going to Newberry this weekend, uh, can you give us a little preview of that game, the second to last conference game before Catawba comes in here? And obviously, that Catawba game looms so so huge right now, given where the two of you are tied at the top of the sack standings, but. It's going to mean a lot less if you guys slip up this weekend against Newberry. Yeah, and we're not thinking about Catawba at this yeah. point. We're, we're solely focused on Newberry and making sure we, we take care of business in that game. And, and they're a good opponent. And I think everybody in the conference right now is competing for something, mm -hmm. whether it's to get into the tournament or competing on the higher ends of the of the uh, top four or, or such. So I think everyone's playing for something, which is always dangerous. Um, so they're a good team. And... They've they've played some really tough games and have some some pace and athleticism that's dangerous. So we got to be the best version of ourselves, and and if we do that, I'm confident against anybody. It'll be ten days off between games. You were supposed to have a game tonight that didn't happen because of the the hurricane and some of the rescheduling that had to happen because of that. Um, we talked a little bit before before we went on about. Taking 10 days off, the, this, the collegiate soccer season is such a sprint. You know, you're going from August to the end of October and hopefully beyond that in November if you're in the postseason. But uh, to take 10 days off, what are some, some pros and cons for that to have 10 days between games here this late in the season? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously the momentum of, of playing games quickly is can be a good thing. Um, I also think having a, a few days off where we can recharge and – um, refocus on some things you know, the student athletes so the academics are always going um, right. you know so to be able to give the team well, we gave them three days off mm -hmm. which at this stage of the season I think can be a real benefit um, we were back to practice yesterday and, and the energy and the focus was really good so that was pleasing um, obviously give us a little bit more time to prepare for, for Newbury and focus on us again um, so hopefully it's a, it's a nice little switch where we can you know refocus um i think we'd all like to play games back to back as much as possible but right. i think uh, it is what it is and hopefully we use it as a positive dean ward and the bears going down to newberry at for a 4 30 p.m kick in their second to last game of the regular season coach thanks for your time and, and good luck this weekend we'll be back next week at blowing rock with regular bears talk live